Well, I'm very proud to, to be here as a sixth generation Arizonan of a proud Mexican American Chicano Yaqui heritage. This, this state, I'm so embarrassed uh, because I know the majority of the people of this state are great and wonderful and kind hearted people of all ethnicities. The working class of Arizona is a proud history. Uh, I'm a son of a copper miner from Osarco. And my mom was also uh, on the state board of ASME. So uh, I'm very, very proud to be, to be a member of Arizona Federation of Teachers, American Federation of Teachers, AFL-CIO. Um, is, these issues are real simple. It's about respect. It's about respect for working families. It's about respect for children. It's about respect for the public. By attacking public workers' uh, rights, you are, the state is attacking the public itself. These are the types of initiatives we've got. It takes courage. It, you know, we have to fight for work. We have to take on tax. We have to take on the right to work for less state law. We have to do something. We have to go on the offensive by fighting these defensive battles. We're 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 lo we're, we're not going to win. Uh, we need to, we need to go on the offense. I just want to tell you that these are uh, from 1486, 87. All these. I, they're just, they're just, they need to vote no, obviously. Um, but they're, they're really an attack on our constitutional rights. Thank you, Ray. Thank you. Thank you. Do you have any Thank questions you. for me? No, I'm, I'm here. <laughs> yes, sir. Mr. Sikios, yes, sir. Uh, I just wanted you, I'm really glad you're calling for action and moving forward instead of simply defensive action. And this is a terrific year to do that for a lot of different reasons. The main one is we have new maps in the legislature, new maps in Congress. They are better maps than the unfair ones we had before. So that means there's an unprecedented opportunity for us to take major seats in the legislature and be able to potentially even get a 15-15 Senate and a 30-30 House this November if we all work together right now. Oh, thank you. Good afternoon. Thank you for being here. I am Michael Corio. I am the Executive Director the American Federation of State, County, Municipal Employees, Local 449, representing the blue collar workers of the city of Tucson, the blue collar workers of Pima Community College, the blue collar workers of Tucson Unified School District, and El Rio Medical Centers. Dwight Eisenhower once said that only a fool will deny working people the right to organize and collective bargain. Unfortunately, those fools are sitting up in the Arizona State Legislature. <laughs> I want you to look at these people sitting here behind me. We are all from different unions, working people, the middle class of Arizona, middle class working people who at the hands of this legislature have already lost educational benefits for our children, health care for our elderly, assistance for the poor, and now the state legislature wants to take away our voice. <laughs> the people before me who have spoke and the people after me We'll talk about the meet and confer, the collective bargaining process, where unions continuously sit down with the municipalities, sit down with the school districts, sit down with the uh, community colleges, the medical centers. We don't sit there and demand outrageous prices, outrageous salaries, outrageous pensions. We only ask for decency. We only ask that we maintain our dignity. Now, I've already quoted one Republican, Dwight Eisenhower. I'm going to quote, I'm going to quote another one. The only way that the Arizona state legislation can get this union away from me is out of my cold, dead hands. We can't stop these bills. 
but the people can. If you can create enough momentum, enough uh, communication with your colleagues, with people in the store, wherever you go, and ask them to talk to their legislators, and make it hot for the legislators, make it hot for the Republicans that support these bills, then we might get change. But remember, it's the power of the people that will make the change. So I ask, we will stand with you, but we need you to stand up in a new, whole, powerful way. Thank you. The unions are not costing the great state of Arizona more money. If the union's only objective was to raise my pay, increase my benefits, or get me a retirement that was bloated, I would not be a union member. I would like to leave today with everybody here knowing that I am bringing home less money than I did four years ago. So I wonder who's bankrupting who. Uh, I'd like to thank you for your time. If you have any questions, I'd love to answer them. In the last comment that you made, Mike, about bringing home less money than you did four years ago. I've heard that from teachers in the Sunnyside School District as well. And I think that's probably across the board. <clears throat> the comment that you made about workers helping to balance the budgets, on your backs, literally, with the furlough days, the lack of increase, you know, the increased money you're having to pay for your health benefits, those kinds of things. I think it would be a good idea, and maybe this has already been done, if, um, if the unions could give us some dollar amounts that relate to that. What have, what have the workers had to pay in order to balance the budgets of the cities, of the states, of the counties? I think that's an important number for us to have. So I appreciate you bringing that forward. Our, our furloughs did equal to approximately 3.5% pay cut. And if I may, Senator Bob mentioned the, the rainy day fund. My, myself and my wife, Debbie, back there, we lost our rainy day fund. It's gone. Um, I like to say that uh, we serve in the People's House or this People's Senate, but unfortunately it's corporate occupied territory and the enforcing occupation army is the Goldwater Institute. The family that's out here is the family of Haymarket Square, it's the family of Ludlow, it's the family of uh, the bonus marchers, it's the family of Clifton Morency and the Bisbee deportation in Wisconsin and now the onslaught and the assault against us here in Arizona. Teachers, women, workers, firefighters, police officers, <laughs> transplant needy citizens, we can go on and on and on. And we're in the crosshairs being from Tucson and Pima County because the, the, the majority there doesn't like who we are and they want to get back to us. The last thing I'm going to say to put things in context of what Ron is talking about, the unlimited amount of money that goes into campaigns here at home, against our family, against our history, is the, it's been discussed already, the $540 million corporate tax cuts that were enacted last year that take place two years from now. And trying to get rid of the uh, capital gains tax and cutting schools and building for-profit prisons. And the war goes on, the battle continues, and we stand here with you, and I want to thank you for your comments. We knew that with parking was going to be a problem because in a union place, in a union house, people come out yeah. when our politicians come to see us. <laughs> Chair Chairman of Oud, Senators and Representatives, thank you for being here today. You know, a area director of ASME once told me, in fact, he used to, to use it an awful lot. He said, you know, not all Democrats are our friends. And not all Republicans are our enemies. And every time I heard him say that, it reminded me of the old story, the old saw that, you know, the race doesn't always go to the fastest or the stronger, but that's the way to bet. That's absolutely the truth in the legislature, because I'll tell you right now, all of you folks sitting at the table, I don't live in your LD. My legislative people in 26, and I'll name them, I'm going to name names today. Al Melvin, Terry Proud, Vic Williams, you ought to be ashamed of yourself for not being here. And over in 30, and I, over in 30, Frank Antonori, Ted Bott, Dave Dow, where are you? Where are you here talking to your people, to your constituents? I don't see you. the people
people that those folks are representing. I didn't hear anybody come up to this day, anybody come up to this podium and say something about ALEC or the Goldwater Institute, the people that are driving this anti-labor, anti-worker legislation through the, the Senate and the, and the House. Right Where are those people? The truth of the matter is, is that those people want to go back to the days when we talk about going back in time. I grew up in an area in, in southwestern Pennsylvania where little kids that were 10 years old used to work 14 hours a day, six days a week in coal mines. That's where Frank Antonori and Al Melvin and the rest of them want us to go back to. I am not going without a fight. And the fight doesn't begin with just talking to representatives and senators. The fact of the matter is, is that it doesn't make any difference what you say. It makes a difference about what you do. And if we are not all out right now gathering votes, if we are not signing people up to vote, if we are not doing voter registration, what we have said will be the clanging of a symbol. Then that's all it will be. So you all got to go out and sign up voter registration. We have to make that along with the fact that the one thing that labor can still do in this country is we can put people on the street. We can go walk neighborhoods. We can get petitions. And I am asking all of you in the labor movement to do that today. Thank you. Thank you, Bruce, and I'm glad you mentioned ALEC and the Goldwater Institute. And how, how many of you here are familiar with what ALEC and the Goldwater Institute have done? Very good. We need to educate audiences like this. And another good reason unions are great. I, uh, uh, I have been looking at the Goldwater Institute testify in behalf of and against bills for my six years in the legislature. I've been watching ALEC wine and dine Republican legislators at fancy resorts all over the country, all expenses paid. And yet, they don't have to reveal their funding sources. They don't have to reveal how much money they're giving to what legislators. That, because they claim they're not lobbying. They are lobbying. So that's, that's why prostitution. That, that's, that's prostitution. Well, that's, that's why I wrote a bill this year called the ALEC Accountability Act, which would force ALEC and the Goldwater Institute to register as lobbyists, to reveal who their funders are, to reveal the money that they gave the legislators, Put it all publicly accessible on websites that anybody can look up and see who took what from whom. Now that bill was was uh, not assigned to any committee this year by Andy Tobin, the speaker. But I'm going to be bringing it up as an amendment to a bill on the floor of the House in order to force debate on it. And the other good news is I got a call from a Wisconsin state representative who saw the bill and said, "Can I run it in my state?" And I said, "Sure," because one of the things Alec does is it, it, it has model legislation, they call it. They have bills that the Koch brothers have written, and they give it to legislators around the country, and then they put it into place. The, those bills are, uh, and, and, and it's only fair that we use our own model legislation to go after them. So the, it's, it's going to be run in Wisconsin now, and just yesterday got a call from an assembly member in New Hampshire. So it's spreading across the country as our own model legislation. It's time to make sure that these people who are going to influence our legislature to go after us need to reveal who they are and who's funding them and who's getting the money.